Why am I eating a ham and cheese sandwich in an outhouse? Stay tuned to find out. So I recently dropped my Nikon Z8 20 millimeter prime lens and the CPL plus ND two-in-one filter over a cliff. But as you can see, the filter survived. There's no cracks, no dents, except what you can't see are hundreds and hundreds of little teeny tiny scratches across the surface where it was embedded in some wet, moist soil. So today, I want you to come with me out into the great outdoors to test out this filter and create some epic images along this 10 mile trek to see if this filter will still work and if it's going to degrade the image or not due to the scratches. So my main destination is about three miles away still, maybe two, two and a half miles, I'm not quite sure. I don't have a GPS system with me, no cellular data out here, but I'm starting to notice a shift in the landscape, whereas before it was very steep, climbs, lots of rocks, dense trees, forests, that kind of thing. And I'm sensing things are starting to spread out a little bit. So it's gonna be interesting to see if I can find any type of images along the way to that final destination where I wanted to shoot mostly landscapes, but there might be some woodland type of shots that I can shoot out here as well. Now, originally when I had planned this particular trip, it was to get some of the fall colors. This is the first week in October. I'm in the upper peninsula of Michigan. And you would think this time of year, we would be at full peak colors. However, as you can see, it's mostly green right now. So I'm not really gonna get those fall colors, but I do expect some epic landscape opportunities just ahead. The other thing I wanna mention real quick before we get to that location or the next location is the more that I spend outdoors, the happier I am. So I think what I wanna do in the future is more of these types of videos where I'm exploring the great outdoors and sharing what I see and why I'm shooting what I'm shooting. Composition, light, things like that. So if that's something you would be interested in watching, go ahead and give this video a like, leave a comment below. And I think I just stirred up a bunch of chipmunks because they were chattering pretty loud back and forth a couple minutes ago. And I was able to create a couple of woodland type of images that I will share at the end. I know I promised I was going to walk you through the composition, but I'll do that when I show you the images. I'm currently on a tight deadline right now. The sun is setting in about four hours and I wanna get there a couple of hours ahead of time so I can get set up and get the compositions that I want during sunset. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up a little bit here and get to that final destination. So I finally made it to one of the locations that I wanted to shoot at and test out the filter but it doesn't look like mother nature wants to play nice today. We have a huge cloud with lightning, thunder, and rain off into the distance. I'm not sure if that's coming this way. I feel like the wind is blowing out, so hopefully it doesn't come. If it does, I'm screwed. Not sure if I'll be able to make it out before getting wet. That being said, check out this location. How epic is that i love it so i'm gonna go ahead and get a couple shots here not going to be able to have time to walk through what i'm shooting composition all that we'll save that till the end and i'll let you know whether or not the cpl nd filter works when it's scratched so hopefully i make it out of here alive so i can share that information with you ladies and gentlemen i have some good news and i have some bad news the good news is I just created a couple of epic landscape images and I can't wait to share those with you if I get out of here alive because the bad news is Mother Nature is coming for me fast. It's only five o'clock in the afternoon and it's getting super dark another two and a half hours before sunset and I'm not sure if I'm gonna make it back to the car in the next two hours without getting wet. I'm gonna have to find some shelter but it's gonna be hard to find in the wilderness out here, so wish me luck. So it looks like Mother Nature won this round. I didn't get the sunset photo that I wanted, but I did create a couple of epic images before she came pouring down and a couple not so great images. And I did try to brave it out inside of a 
semi-enclosed outhouse. However, the stench was too much to handle and I would rather brave mother nature and her reign than to sit there and smell that for the next three to four hours or however long it's gonna take her to unleash her wrath. And once I get back to the truck and back home, I'm gonna dry off and I'm gonna share those epic images with you and share whether or not you can use a CPL ND filter with scratches on it. Talk soon. All right, so I have made it back alive and dry and I didn't melt like mama said I would because that was so sweet I was gonna melt in rain. Just kidding. Anyways, I have six images here that I wanna share with you. We're gonna go over some compositional tips real quick and then I'm going to answer the question we've all been waiting for. Does a scratched CPL plus ND filter ruin your images? Is it going to degrade your images? So let's find out. So this is one of the woodland images that I created on the way to the final destination. It's not a great photo, it's okay. I kind of like it and that's because of the compositional techniques that I applied to this particular image, which are these converging lines from the trail direct our viewer into the rest of the image. We also have some luminance contrast between the trail here, which is much darker than the background here, and it's much brighter, which also grabs our attention. Now, a couple things that can make this image better, mist, fog, or someone or something at the end of the trail, like a person or maybe a deer or moose or something to add additional interest to the image. But overall, it's an okay image. All right, so here's one of the first shots that I created with the scratched CPL plus ND filter. Now, the composition is okay. It's not great, it's a little unbalanced. So if I place a line down the middle here, you can see that it's much heavier on the left side than the right side. But other than that, I kind of like how I've utilized the foreground here as a frame and a leading line into the rest of the image. And then our eyes naturally gravitate to the background here because these clouds are very deep, dark blue, and we can see that there's a storm coming. So it kind of gives you an indication of the weather at this time of day and what I was facing at this time. Now, again, just like the previous image, it would be nice to have another subject over here, like maybe a boat or something out here, kayak, cruise ship or something, to add into this area here to balance it out just a little bit. And that would make this particular image that much better. But I do like including the foregrounds like this to kind of give us an indication of what's on the other side or what's on the cliffs over here. And we can see that better in this image here. I really love this location. This was a little bit further than this location, so the clouds were rolling in even more so than in that previous image. But I like utilizing foreground elements like this to give us an indication of what the cliffs are made of, which is sandstone. And you can see right here, we have some sand down here. So it kind of gives you a glimpse into what's on the other side over here, plus the type of trees. Now this tree had fallen, unfortunately. I had seen this particular image with this tree alive and well before I went. So I was kind of disappointed to see that it had fallen over, but it kind of gives us a little bit more of a foreground interest. And then we have another tree over here that kind of frames or balances out this image, I should say, a little bit better than the other one. So if we put a line down the middle here, we now see that it's a lot more balanced than that previous image. That being said, I'm not quite sure how much I like this image because I do find these leaves and branches here to be kind of distracting from the rest of the scene. We're kind of bouncing back and forth between the left side and the right side. So I like to make things simpler so we have a particular subject to focus on, which I did in this particular image. So all I did was I was back here about four or five feet away from the edge. I just moved up to the edge right here. I put my tripod right about here 
And that allowed me to bypass that foreground sandy area and the tree to make a simpler image. And I kind of like this image a lot better, but I kind of like this one as well. So let me know in the comments which one you like better, the tree or without the tree. Now, I like this one because it is simpler, but we also have this strong diagonal lines coming in, converging at this point here. We also have them here a little bit, but I find this diagonal line here, these two to be much more powerful than this shorter one over here. Now, as far as the foreground element, it's kind of plain, but the color of the water does create interest in the foreground. So I consider this to be the foreground, the middle ground, and then of course the background is the clouds. So we have depth in the image, which I think helps with this particular composition and this one as well. Now, the color is really awesome in my opinion. I like this color. Now, I didn't manipulate the colors in the sense of changing the hue to get this green color. That's the natural color because the water is so shallow and the color of the elements underwater plus the blue water, it just creates this greenish, aqua type of color and I did enhance it slightly with saturation and vibrance just to make it a little bit more prominent as well as some dodging and burning to make it a little bit brighter than it was at time of capture. Now this last image here is my favorite. Now again if we put a line down the middle we can see that it is not as balanced. Actually, I need to put that on the correct layer here. So I'm gonna put a line right down the middle. So it's heavier on this side than this side. Now, not every image has to be perfectly balanced, but I like a little bit of symmetry in my image. And again, I like to make them cleaner and simpler by eliminate elements that aren't helping the overall image. And in this case, I find that the trees here are kind of distracting from the primary subject, which are these cliffs right here, or this cliff right here and these trees. And I like the character of the sandstone cliffs right here. And then our water here again is really shallow. So what I did is again, I just moved closer to get in a little bit tighter on the primary subject here, which is right here. So I think that is the primary subject and we have some leading lines with the elements under the water here as well as the edge of the cliff here that help direct our viewers into the rest of the image to the primary subject. And we do have depth in here because we have our foreground elements here, our middle ground, and then our background again. So we have that depth. Now I do like the contrast and the colors in the storm clouds that are starting to dissipate at this point in time. And we have this little glow from the sun coming through. And I really love this image. Out of this trip, I took over a thousand images and I believe this is my favorite one. Again, let me know which one you like better, trees or no trees. Now, in terms of did the scratched filter degrade any of these images? The answer is no. I zoomed in 100, 200, 400% and I didn't see any degradation from the scratched filter. So I'm going to continue using it and I don't think I need to get rid of it until there's some big heavy scratches in there that are going to become visible on my images. Until then, I'm gonna continue using it. Now, if you're new to using CPL and ND filters, or you're not quite sure what they are, they can make your images better. And to learn more about them, I created this video tutorial right here explaining what they are and how they can make your images better. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day.